thanks everybody for coming. We've got a few people that were going to come. And there's quite a bit of flu out there, so they weren't able to make it tonight. What I'm going to talk to you tonight about is about health in a different respect. In this day and age, we see people that are supposedly, quote, healthy getting sick. We see the sick getting sicker. We see people going to doctors. They get well, but they don't get totally well. We see people trying naturopathic medicine and natural cures. We don't see the natural medicine getting people well. So what I'm going to talk to you tonight is about the success that I've had. Uh, there are a lot of people that think I have been able to do something that's quite unique, when really what I do is not unique at all in my book. Um, I try to deal with things that everybody would be able to do with a little bit of homework, a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and a whole bunch of something that's missing today, common sense. I kind of get up in the morning when I say my prayer first thing. I don't ask for common sense anymore. That was great when I was a kid. After growing to the age I am now, I ask for something a little better than common sense. It seems like uh, that's what's needed out there. I'm going to talk to you today about building health, about how is it we build our health, what is it that makes us healthy, how is it that we get to a base of health, a base from which we can deliver results in all areas of our life. So I'm going to talk about eight important steps plus how to treat it at the end and where it comes from. And that base is made up of these items. It's made up of removing the problematic causes. It's about cleansing the system after you've gotten rid of the cause. It's about correcting the pH balance, absorption, and assimilation. And then going on to the right minerals, the right vitamins, the right proteins, the right fats, the right carbohydrates. And if you get to this point and you haven't seen everything just about totally taken care of, then you would want to treat it. It literally, by this point, should be that good. Once a person starts with this, there should be nothing but a progression of health or performance. So let's talk about health. Health is our performance level. Your health is your performance level. It's what we're made of. It's what we're made of. It's the sum total of your thoughts and your actions about your caring for yourself. Okay? It's the sum total of your thoughts and your actions and how you care for yourself. So look at a person and I'll tell you how you care. And there's a lot of my clients in here will probably agree with that. Uh, the next thing that's really good about it is that when I get into this thing about the health tonight, of course, it's going to be about the physical health. There'll be another time when we'll talk on the other aspects as far as the emotional and the mental outlook, but the mental always adds in because that's really right there with the physical. So what we're going to do is that, however, the mind, you see, the mind, it needs to get the message. And so maybe the spirit of the man, the life force of the man, will be able to stay in this vehicle a little longer and travel a little farther. But that physical vehicle, okay, or you want to look at it as a car or a physical vehicle, I prefer to look at it as a house in a way, but the length of time that we are able to reside in this physical being, some people look at it as a rag the way they take care of it, I think, is going to determine the quality of the ride and how long our spirit stays with us. When we leave and we, our body is done, we can tell, obviously, from forensics, everything that we have done or not done about our bodies, what we were missing or what we weren't missing. When you're young, it's about you know, the, how well you can perform and what you look like. As you get a little older, it's more about the quality of life and, and, and how long you're going to be there. As you get older, it's just about the quality. Okay? The, the choices change. The priorities tend to change. So. The developing a base for health, the first thing we need to consider is what's on board. Okay? If we've got this vehicle and we're going through life, what's on board? What are we able to respond from? What is our ability to respond? It's like the epigeneticists have said, there is no genetic disease. Your DNA was limited, turned on or off more or less by what your mother ate during her pregnancy. So your DNA does not change. Your DNA is turned on or off. 
But this is how, in the article in the New York Times, they talked about how they could change the color of rats, the structure of rats, the lifetime, the longevity of the rats, how they absorb nutrients, how they thought, worked, everything had to do with how they were built, why they were built, when they were built. We're electrical and we're chemical. Our life force is electrical. We all need electrolytes. We all need to have the components that keep us functioning day to day. And what we take into our body is either attracted and helps ionically at the cell level to spin the body and keep it working at a smoother, faster pace, or it comes in and it tends to just sit there and neutral, being kind of neutral, and we don't tend to get a lot of energy out of it, and it doesn't tend to be real bad for us, but that's still kind of a drag. It's not adding to us. And then there's the obviously bad things that we can put in our bodies. The excesses of caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, etc., etc. Those things are definitely negatives. They are going to pull from us. They are going to slow us down. So everything is going to do something either to us or for us. It's better that it be for us. We want to keep these things working in a positive manner. The limits here about our physical potential start here in the mind. It's your mindset. It's how you view things. It's what you want to learn. A lot of individuals will say to me, well, I could never do a diet like that. And I tell them I understand. I can look at you and see that you couldn't. But I can see that if you wanted to, you may. So let me talk to you about a few things. What if, and I paint a picture of several items and I kind of connect the dots. And they go, well, I could see how that could work. Well, would you be willing to try it? Well, I'm more open to it now. It's how we open our mind to information, to hear someone through, to hear a thought process through. If you want to see a person's mind get opened up, let them get a very dangerous disease. It's amazing how more open those individuals will become. It seems to soften the exterior. So everything is either positive or negative. You know, there's a saying that goes along with this. The mind is willing, but the body is weak. No, the mind was very weak. Now the body is worse. Okay. <laughs> now, the problem here is, the mind is willing, is it? Is it willing to do anything other than let self-will run riot? Is it willing to do anything to say, wait a minute, it's going to do something to me or for me? I'm going to have an effect. Every time we go to take a bite of food, if we just say, and is it going to go on me or in me? That would help. And then is it going to do something for me or against me. It's literally that good. But most people today have never felt good enough to want to make these decisions. If a person can start to feel a little bit of success, it's amazing how much they open up. They always say that, you know, motivation brings success. Wrong. Very, very wrong. Success brings motivation. This is what I have worked with for over 30 years in this business. All the people that I have had fortune with, with being sick and have done well, or as an example, it doesn't matter if an individual with me is like Roland Shack, professor at the university, whether he is 79 and came to me at 75, to get him performing at another level, feeling better, looking better, he's more flexible, he's more agile, he's, less, he's more stable, he doesn't tend to want to trip or fall, He's more physically active, has more energy. There's no difference in working with him than working with someone like John May, who's an ultra hunter and, and climbs mountains for sheep and hunts them with a bow and can run all day long and hunt all day long and then carry a, an animal out when he's done. There's no difference. It's all the same physical structure. A little more aged over here, a little more young over here. But each one of them has exactly the same needs. The only difference is they need different amounts. We all have the same needs, we just need different amounts. So we're the sum total, we are the sum total of our physical input. Nutrients are very powerful things. You need to realize that in just over a year, every cell in your body is brand new. Every cell 
is brand new. You have a new stomach lining in four days. A new layer of skin every 28 days. I mean, your body literally takes care of you when you haven't taken care of it. Our bodies do unbelievable things, as Tom Heyman said in his book, In an Average Lifetime. I love quoting his book. Remember, we eat up, the average American eats 109,000 pounds of food. 109,000 pounds of food. 4,900 pounds of sugar. 109,000 pounds of food. That will do something to you. But it's better if it does something for you. Just think about that. 109,000 pounds. 55 tons. 110 pickup truck loads of food goes through your body. Now that food could have either worn you down trying to get it through. It could have sustained you and been moderate work going through. Or it could have been something that added life to you. Our heart contracts 2,750,000 times. 2,756,000,000 times, excuse me. Do you think that needs any maintenance? I wonder why people's hearts are giving out today. They don't have the fuel to make it run right, let alone let the materials pass through it right, let alone keep it up to par to keep it pumping right. So it can't function right. It can't pass the materials that are there that are wrong to pass through it, so they're not right. And the energy supply that it has is not right. In 1933, 72 years ago, the U.S. Department of Agriculture sent a message to Congress that said that the fields in the United States were at that point, 72 years ago, were unfit to grow food viable for human health. Unable to grow food for good enough for human health. Let me give you a little example. I've been in the business 30 years this year of helping people, private coaching. I was one of the first four people ever mentioned in the National Fitness and Trade Journal with Lou Ferrigno about being a, quote, personal trainer. I'm not. My background is a human performance specialist. Please, I don't teach people to jump through hoops. And I'm not a personal trainer. I'm about helping people recover, not give them exercise. I've never worked with anyone for 30-some years that I did not start with a base or a foundation of promoting their health. And during this time, I started with supplementation early on, when I learned that the name Adam, biblically, went back to a name that meant clay. And I started went to an assay of a human being, and it found out that he was 5% minerals and one half of 1% vitamins. I said, wait a minute. I need more minerals and I need vitamins. He came from the clay, and we're going to the clay. Wait a minute, we're dirt. Well, I went, wow, chemicals, nutrients. And it just went crazy from there. But I want to tell you that I started these people out back then with minerals. Because back then, 30 years ago, we were low on minerals already. Because the fields in the United States, that was the main thing they were missing, were the minerals. Topsoil, erosion, plants actually taking out of ground, made taste in your food, went through you, went somewhere else, wherever. I gave people supplements. I gave them a multivitamin and two mineral tablets. And I gave them a little vinegar to help their digestion. And it worked fine. But I found very soon that I wasn't getting fast enough results with people. And I was wondering what the limitations were. So I kept my eye on their food and the quality of food. And I started noticing that people from Mexico or foreign countries that came from other areas where they were more rural, they had better health and seemed to respond better to my program than the people who were from the city. What was wrong with the people from the city? They hadn't had as good food. I started asking a lot of questions about their diet and how they got there and about their health. And I started really making notes about their health and how they felt at night and how they slept. I started becoming a maniac about symptoms, about the way they were feeling and how things were affecting them, blood sugar, etc. And pretty soon, within a few years, I was having to go to three minerals and two multivitamins. And then I had to add some C and then some B, and then some E, and then and as time has gone on, I've had to add more and more. And to where now, about every three and a half to four and a half years, I have to make a change in the supplementation if I want to keep the same results coming up. The interesting part is, 
is that I've also done something very unique. I have cut down the amount of exercise and gotten the same amount of results. Because exercise being a stress, not a benefit, because it is a stimulus, because it is a strain, it is a trigger to make the muscle change chemically, that the recovery system or the materials that were made of needed to be present in that body prior to that stimulus so that it could respond. Remember, it was like shaving your face today and cutting yourself to eat the food tomorrow, today, or yesterday. You should have eaten that food yesterday. So I found out that the people weren't responding, so I cut the exercise back, got more effective on the stimulus, and they still weren't recovering. So I tried something. I took some of my clients, and some of them were my friends. I don't know if they still want to be my friend much anymore after some of the things I put them through, but they've forgiven me. I gave them supplements where I would actually buy them for them. And I'd have them take them, as I said. And I wasn't very nice about it. I wanted it done. Okay? And I did it with myself also. And I found that the people who received massive amounts of nutrients always made better results than the people who didn't take the larger amount of supplements. So then I started suggesting minimums. And of course, people aren't going to take them anyway all the time. But that's okay. At least it relieved my thoughts and my feelings. It was about my responsibility, not about theirs. It was about my being ethical, not theirs. So I started talking some people into trying it, and they felt the difference right away. They saw the difference right away. Gene here is a good example. Hepatitis C, 73% reduction in viral load. Her husband goes on just the dietary part with the supplements, and I didn't even adjust his diet. Lost weight, and his heart put out 10% more. I've got a guy in here, Pete Shepley, who was just tested last week. His heart at 64 is putting out 20% more than they've ever seen. Of course, he's been better on his diet than he's been for a long time. And then there's Mari over here from the sushi bar who, you know, Mari had high blood pressure and trouble with the knee. And I showed her how to do it and just told her from one session, she made a difference in herself, majorly. Jamie had a client who had gone to Mayo Clinic, right? And she had been in the Grand Rounds at the University of Arizona with skin and other problems. Four weeks, right, Jamie? Boom, change. But it had to be done, like I said. So let me give you a, a little synopsis of what I'm talking about here. Where, where is our health? Our health is going to come from food. That's what we're made of, the food of the ground. Our health is from food grown in worn out fields, planted with engineered seeds, fertilized with chemicals, irrigated with affluent water, breathing polluted air, sprayed with toxic pesticides, harvested at the wrong time, taken to mar market to be irradiated, to be pre-prepared, to be eaten by someone who's already out of balance and possibly ill, trying to get healthy. Where do you think the problem is? Do you think you're going to get it from your food? That was 10 points. Now, I didn't add in there. I know that all of you out there really know that the farmer cares more about your nutrition and his profit. <laughs> so we need to stop and think about this. So where do our problems start? In the mirror. In the mirror. And I want to bring up a point that I really like. I, I love quotes. I'm very big on quotes. So let me start with the first one. Let's go all the way back to 460 B.C. with Hippocrates. Let thy food be medicine, and thy medicine food. Now what happened to that? Now I want to give you one other one that this one really grabs me. It really speaks to me. This, the next major advance in health for the American people, the next major advance in health for the American people will be determined by what the individual is willing to do for himself. John Knowles, former president of the Rockefeller Foundation. What are you willing to do for yourself? It's about our food. We're going to be, you know, we are processed to death. The problem today with all the diabetes in this country, all the fatty livers that the kids had, all the problems, that we, it's about us not taking control of our own constitution. 
It's almost like we belong to a foreign army and we're at war. We're trying to destroy this Constitution. We need to change it. We're being processed to death. And if you're going to keep eating processed food and pre-prepared food, you'd better be pre-prepared for what's going to happen to you. We're living longer. We're living in the mid-70s, but not in a healthy way. Not in a healthy way. We're living longer because we are sustained or stimulated longer by chemical influences called drugs. We are on way more drugs today than we've ever been before. So we're masking the problem. We're not getting to the cure. We're adding chemicals to a problem that should have been fixed. A cure is to restore to the original condition. If we do not start eliminating these causes, if we don't start eliminating these problematic causes, we cannot hope to get better. Even natural, even the natural medicines today are, are failing. People call me all the time, Bert, uh, what is it that you said helped with high blood pressure? I said changing your diet. No, 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 what was that herb you said? I said changing your diet. No, the herb. I said I'm giving you the herb. <laughs> you know? I won't do it anymore. I just don't hand it out anymore. Why? Because I've been given a gift and I consider this talent that I have very, very powerful and very, very fortunate for me to be able to work with it. So therefore, what I want an individual to do is to take it and utilize it, not waste my time when I could be helping somebody where it would make a difference. There's going to be someone like Jean who's going to listen, or someone like Jane, or someone like Mara. This is what it's about. There's too much specializing. Everyone today specializes. Even naturopaths are specializing. What happened to the whole being? Where, where was our whole being? Where did it go? You know, there's no logical thinking. Everything is emotion and ego. Oh, look at how I look. I need to eat less. You're already getting nothing in your food. What are you going to use for food? You know, the stress is here in us. We have a more stressed environment. We have a more stressed workplace. A lot of us have more stressed environment around us. We've got less in the food. The food is more processed. There's more chemicals in it. There's more chemicals in us. Again, where, what are we going to do about these problematic causes? And remember, if we want to be revitalized, re, listen to the words, revitalized. If we want to be vital again, we need to stop these problematic causes and remember that everything we're doing, positive or negative, so we need to recognize them. So we have to change. That change is not difficult, but if you start in one area, Start with one little thing you can do. Stop that cup of coffee. Stop it. Find an herbal tea to replace it. Stop that food that has the chemicals in it. Stop that sweet and low. Oh my goodness. You know, artificial sweeteners. The average artificial sweetener affects your taste buds as being 200 times sweeter than sugar. It's not that the chemical is so addicting you've been desensitized. So that you need something else to help satisfy that, that itch. That taste, that's, that's what you want. We've got to do it the way the body dictates. We cannot dictate to this body. This body needs to dictate to us. All the success that I have had and everything that I'm going to go through here with these processes, and we're talking right now about the problematic causes and removing them and recognizing them and turning them into positives, we need to take action against that. So we need to change. And a lot of this is the, the inability for our body to respond. The reason our body can't respond when we start to get sick is that we don't have the things in us to respond with. And we're already overloaded with problematic causes. We can't take anymore. Every little thing that comes along gives us a bad effect. Another bad effect. These things also build up over time. Some of these things and some of these chemicals, some of these they last in our liver, in our kidneys, in our pancreas, in our bloodstream. The average human has a lot of these toxins all the way to the bone. <coughs> the is, today in our outside environment, the orca whales and the polar bears and the penguins at both extremities of the planet are full of PCBs and all the rest. Where are we now? Here in the middle. Century. So we need to look at stopping the ones we can, changing the things we can, and remembering that our body 
It's going to be new every 15 to 60 months if we give it what it needs. So we've got to remove these problematic causes. We've got to get onto it and get on it right away. We need to start working about if we're going to get better, we've got to stop the incoming cause. We've got to start questioning what we're taking in. We need to get the things that we know that are obvious and then start with things that are maybe not so obvious. Not so obvious. I'll bring up one point that is the thing that I have found to be one of the four greatest to affect people is dairy. I have a very, very difficult time helping a lot of people with any types of health that are going to continue with dairy products. First of all, look at a baby. Look at a cat. Do they look the same to you? Do you think those two have the same needs? If your baby does, I tell you, you've got problems. That's one ugly baby. But the thing that you've got to look at is, is that do you think the content, do you think the amino acid and the protein makeup of that calf is the same as that baby? Do you think the nutrient needs for that calf are the same as for that baby? And then you're going to heat that milk to 300 degrees four to five times. What do you think's left in it other than mucus and sugar? The amino acid profile in milk is proven to be harmful to the human immune system. One of the first things I need to do to help anybody to get well is to get them off of dairy products and stop the irritation in the digestive tract and causes all the mucoid linings and the mucus going through the digestive tract. In the digestive tract, you have villi, little fibers that help to pick up nutrients from the food. It transfers it across the, the intestinal wall to the blood. When it gets in the blood, it then travels through the blood to this thing called the nutrient foramen, the nutrient hole in the bone. It then goes into the bone, and where you form new blood cells, and it comes out of the bone, and goes back through your body. So if your mucusy in your bowel, your mucusy in your blood, your mucusy to the bone, you know? I wonder so many of us are clouded in our thinking, so to speak. I mean, just think about it. We, we've got to get these things out. We've got to stop some of these, these problems. And when you add one to another, for instance, if you were a smoker, two cigarettes a day is as lethal as it gets. Two cigarettes a day is as lethal as it gets. After that, you're just heaping deadliness on top of deadliness. There's no deadlier. We've had clients in here that were smokers. One cigarette can hold their heart rate elevated for over 36 hours. One cup of coffee can hold your heart rate up for over 36 hours. Now, if that has all your muscles hyperflexing, it's driving your blood sugar level down. It'll affect you if you're on a weight loss program or if you're diabetic. It increases the muscles to be stressed more than they need to. If the blood sugar level goes down, it causes you to start running on adrenaline. Now your adrenal adrenals are stressed. This is a compounded thing. Nothing, nothing is not effective. Remember going back to the sea? It's planted in a worn out field and it's engineered and it's watered with affluent water and chemical fertilizers and pesticides and well that's us. We're compounded when compounded. These things that we have are very, very bad and then we're compounding them. Wait a minute, stop. Start getting back to basically good things. Start with something clean, something fresh, something that's not got a lot of additives. Stop with the food coloring, stop with the preserves. I'm not telling you to stop living. I'm telling you to start really. I'm asking you not to stop eating everything you like. I'm asking you to ask yourself a question like I've asked my clients for 30 years. Ask yourself just this, is this the exception or the rule? Is this the exception or the rule? Hey, I'm sad Bert eating a bacon and egg sandwich with half the bread, half of a cinnamon roll and a coffee. Whoa. Hey, it's my break day. My mind needs it. My body likes it. I like the little jolt. It's Saturday morning. I'm going to get off. Hey, that's the exception, not the rule. I don't do that every day. And I don't do it every Saturday. Unless I can. <laughs> I can resist everything but temptation. But the truth of the matter is, I'll go to the movies. And when I was a little boy, I made that little boy a promise. And I've kept this one promise. And we won't get into why, but when I go to the movies, Bert spends between $25 and $30 on junk. Yeah, I buy a hot dog. My dad used to say that everything was in there but the oink, and if you eat it, you'll oink too. He was right. <laughs> but I'll, I'll get a hot dog and put, you know, jalapenos on it and mustard on it. And I'll have a soda. You bet I will. I'll have a buttered popcorn. Yes, I will. I'll have some candy. I end up throwing a lot of it out. 
But you know what? It's the exception that isn't the rule. On the other hand, Mari's here, she can tell you. I'd probably eat sushi as much as anybody, right, Mari? I eat more raw fish, and you would not believe how much elk meat I've been given that I eat raw. Richard knows I will. We'll, we'll eat that stuff raw. I, I'll eat liver raw. I'll eat fowl raw if I know where it came from. I don't know that it's clean. So you've got to start changing your basics. If you change your basics, eventually you're going to change the long term. So after we get through removing these problematic causes, let's cleanse that system. And let's talk about that cleansing. There's a lot of different ways to cleanse the body. And I don't go along with a lot of these so-called exotic ways. You know, if you look at how we're built, everything kind of has its own settling effect, if you get my drift. It kind of goes in one end and it's supposed to come out the other. Well, we were given a body that will work like that, provided we feed it what it needs. So what I try to do is to say, I'm not going to go about this from I think, I feel, or I believe, but this is what my system seems to dictate. And that first thing that I need to realize is, is that my input is going to determine my output. How many people in here eat at least two to three times a day? Hold your hand up. Okay. How many people in here at times in their life have only had one output a day, one bowel movement? Where were the other meals? So if you're, you know, if you're kind of stinky there, you're stinky in your bowel, then you're stinky in your blood, then you're stinky to the bone. There you go. Toxic. How many people here always get more than three quarts of water a day? Hold your hand up. More than three. You don't even start to get your body clean until you have three quarts minimum, and then it starts. You know, I heard one of the greatest stories today I have ever heard. I just got a chance to meet Mr. Bill Wright here in the sweatshirt there was the tennis coach for the University of Arizona. And I'll tell you what, he's, I know what a coach that guy was. I've also done some checking on him. He told me the neatest story that he said his dad brought him up. That when you were sick, his dad said, well, I'm staying home today with you, son. And he'd come in with a two-quart glass of water, is the way he described it, and he'd say, drink this. And he said, every five minutes did you sit down? Every five minutes on the clock, you drank another glass of water. Bill said, man, he was in school within about three hours. <laughs> I asked him, did you swim there? <laughs> the truth of the matter is, there's a lot to that. Bill said he did well right away a lot of times. And he never went to the doctor. You know, he was flushing bad things out. It was that principle. You know, if most people did nothing more than hydrate themselves, they would feel so much more energy just because of elimination increase cellular detoxification just from the transfer across the cell, and their energy level would be increased. So you've got to remember that when you eat it, it's going to affect you in the blood, in the bowel, all the way to the bone. It's all connected. You're one unit. You're electrical. So your elimination should be like your intake. If you have a baby or a puppy and you feed them, they go. If you eat, you should go. If you eat, you should go. I mean, if you're eating four or five meals a day, which you should be, it shouldn't be unusual to go at least three times a day. And this is one of the problems. If we were getting more of these bad things we had taken in out of us, but that also shows that the things we're taking in are not correct because they're not moving through one. And two, they're probably leaving residues in there, and we don't have the things in the cells to help move those things out. So logic is, number one, hydrate. And I suggest no less than four quarts of water a day. And I don't like, I do not like distilled water. I believe in purified water. Leave the mineral content in. Purified water. Four quarts a day should be the frequency. And remember, it's quality, quantity, and frequency. Those are the factors. Quantity, quality, and frequency. Considerations for a cleanse is after you've hydrated yourself adequately, you want to get the organs and tissues clean at the cell level. And this can be done with quite a few different types of herbs. We use a combination of several types of different herbs, which I won't get into tonight, but we use herbs that work specifically for the blood. And while they're working with the blood, they work with the kidneys and the liver and the lymph and all the other things in the body. And we give the body enough food. So many people will go on a cleanse and they will starve themselves and they will feel really, really bad, or they'll say they feel really, really good, or they get you for it. But I'll tell you, a true cleanse, usually you don't feel real good. When these bad things are coming out, 
you're feeling. And it doesn't need to be uncomfortable where it's something you have to stay at home or stay in the bathroom. But when you've got the right things going into your body, and you're exchanging enough water through your body, and each cell is emptying itself out and taking in new, things work. Now, there's a lot of herbs that are very medicinal and very powerful and can work this way, so it should be done with someone who knows what they're doing. I don't suggest that people take this on and do it by themselves. It should be done with a professional or a physician of natural or regular medicine who knows what they're doing. I'm forced by law to say these things. But uh, I will not hold you accountable if you use common sense or self-evident truth. Okay, those are kind of just open to the public. But you want to use herbs and you want to use foods. And you've got to remember, if you're going to cleanse yourself and you're going to try and get bad things out of your body, you still want to have the amounts of fiber and materials to carry the waste materials out on a regular basis. So you should have your body moving things through fairly well. And you should be exchanging them at the cell level, so it's going to need adequate nutrition. You're going to need to also feed your other tissues. You don't want your muscles to go down, so they need to be fed. So there are proteins during a cleanse that can be done. We do it all the time. And we use different types of proteins and vegetables and fruits, along with these herbal mixtures that help people to get well and to get these toxins out. And where's your body been? If it's been in a bad place for a long time, you're going to need to remember that it's going to take a little longer maybe to get these things through you. And you can tell when these things are working. And remember when you do something natural, you may tend to feel it more. You're not going to be masking as many of the symptoms. After you've got your body cleansed and things are working and you're feeling good, then you want to start worrying about your absorption and your assimilation and your pH balance. If you're going to absorb things like minerals, vitamins, and nutrients, you're going to want to get to the acid pH balance. And you want to make your body a little more acid than alkaline. A lot of people have said, no, they believe the other way. I'm just going to say that the results that we've gotten and results are approved, just like our website, that we use a little more acid than alkaline type of pH balance. And we do that by using an alkaline solution in the morning called unpasteurized apple cider vinegar to start it. And we start with that, and by putting that into our system, which is very severely alkaline, it tends to make your system then respond by becoming acid, and it's ready to start digesting your food. Okay? And so when you eat protein in your diet, that tends to make your system acid. So there's a way of starting these things and working these things and balancing these things where it can all be done together. So you're going to want to start to prioritize how you put foods together. Your foods being put together are chemicals. Again, you can have a positive effect, more of a neutral effect, or a bad effect. But we've already talked about getting rid of those bad effects. And there are better combinations of food and less quality combinations of food that will tend to work not as well for you. One of the things that people need to also think about is your blood sugar level. Because if your blood sugar level is not correct and not maintained properly, when your foods are taken in, they're first prioritized for energy, then repair happens. If the energy demands are not met, and not over met, but just met, then any of your repair food will go for energy and not for repair. And this is where you need to have the right amounts of food at the right time, depending on your performance level or your state of health, health performance, same level. So you want the best reaction that you can possibly get. You want them to work together. You want to take your nutrients where they're going to be assimilated the best. This diet that I'm talking about and this way of eating is called a high nutrient, low calorie diet. It's the only diet that's been proven to extend life. High nutrient, low calorie. Well, we're not going to get that out of those fields we talked about or with those engineered seeds or that affluent water or those chemical pesticides or uric. Okay, so we know this. So let's talk about what we're going to do. We're going to get some quality supplements that are free of the calories but high in nutrient. We're going to eat the lower calorie foods that work better together in a, in, a, in a more efficient manner. And we're going to have a body that's not being overworked processing the food that we're trying to get to help us. So many people put foods in their body, they say, I'm getting healthy, and the food is just overworks their digestive capacity. It's just not going to work well. So we've worked with these things. That's how we help you people to get a size off every. Everyone should be able to lose a size every 10 to 14 days minimum. 
They should never have hunger, never have hunger, never have a craving, lose a size every 10 to 14 days, lower your resting heart rate anywhere from 4 to 6 to as much as 12 or 14 beats in the first 4 weeks, gain 6 pounds or more if you're a female of muscle in 4 weeks, and if a male, 9 or more pounds of muscle in the first 4 weeks, have your energy level go through the ceiling, and be able to measure that by changing your body composition, by photographs, by measurements, by body composition, by blood tests, by changing your blood chemistry, correct? I mean, I have the proof right here. So you want that high nutrient, low calorie diet that prioritizes food and does not overwork your body. After you've got these things taken care of and the absorption and incineration, now let's get to the food. So we've gotten rid of the problems or we've reduced them. Right there, we're going to feel better. Now watch how this starts to work for you. Then you're going to clean out the old stuff. You're going to get the bad stuff out. Oh, wait, now the effects from the bad stuff are gone. Not only is the bad stuff not coming in, but now the old bad effects are going out. Now I've got the new stuff ready to come in, and it can absorb it. Wow, i got a new stomach lining every four days. I wonder how important keeping that, that together is. Now let's go to the number one thing we're made out of that's the most important minerals. Why would we want to worry about minerals first? Because Adam, Adam, was made from the dust of the ground. And when you assay a human, they're more mineral than anything else other than protein. So let's look at those minerals. It makes up 5% of the human body. And minerals are absolutely vital in these areas. They control all the fluid balances and tissue at the cell level, all fluid balances at the tissue and cell level. All fluids, all tissues, controlled by mineral content. All your hormones depend, all your triggers, your hormones, depend on the right minerals. Your water balance in your body overall is totally taken care of by minerals. Your mental and physiological processes, in turn, are all controlled by mineral balance. It keeps your blood and tissues in the right acid alkaline balance that we just talked about. You mean if I get the right minerals, that helps to keep my acid pH balance right? Yes. It helps to keep all your fluids working right. Okay? Now, it permits the nutrients to go in and out of the cells. It's responsible for cellular exchange of nutrients. I wonder what would happen if you started taking electrolytes and minerals together. Wow you'd be more charged and exchange more nutrients and be able to feel a lot more energy. When you go to bed at night, I suggest that all my clients take their mineral tablets at night with electrolytes. When your body turns to the cell to repair all the cell level, what a time to have electrolytes. I wouldn't advise it with a lot of glucose or any sugar with it. But think about that. When you go to bed at night, you lay down and go to sleep and it turns to the cell level. Imagine if your electrical force field was more charged you had more fluid balance going on, would you wake up more energetic, more revitalized, more repaired? All your minerals are supplied by diet. All the major minerals are supplied by diet. They're interrelated and no one mineral can work without the other essential minerals. And there are over 17 that are essential. 17 essential minerals. A simple mineral deficiency in one mineral one mineral can cause a major illness. In fact, it's amazing how many illnesses that I've worked with that I knew that one mineral, a certain protein, and one or two other nutrients would help to fix that particular symptomatic disease. Disease. Disease, unrest at the cell level. Remember, disease creates sickness. Sickness is not disease. Now, just real quickly, calcium works with the nerves, skin, and arthritis. Arthritis is demineralization of the bone. Chromium is what's causing a lot of the missing chromium and vanadium is what's causing a lot of the blood sugar disorders. Iodine for obesity, dry hair, irritability. Magnesium is huge in getting things across the cell wall. Selenium helps to prevent the aging. Zinc. It's one of the things that if you don't have enough of it, it predisposes you to cancer. Now let's go to the next nutrient, vitamins. Vitamins, vitamins work with, with enzymes in the body. Your body's made
10 of vitamins. And you know, we have this thing called the RDA, the required daily amount. Linus Pauling made a very great statement about that, the man who was famous for vitamin C, Nobel Peace Prize winner. He said that the RDA does not or is not the allowance that leads to best health. It is not the allowance that leads to best health. But he says it would prevent death and serious illness from overt vitamin deficiency. In other words, the RDA is to give you the absolute minimum to sustain you. Now listen to this. If you are an averagely active individual from a temperate climate, now, do you think the stress levels have changed since we've given, been given these RDAs? You can probably bet on them. There are different types of vitamins. You have the fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. Those are more your immune system. You have the water-soluble vitamins, which are B and C. Those have to do with energy replacement, collagen, and so on. Uh, when it comes to vitamins and minerals, I believe in expensive urine. I'd rather have 10% too much in the right ionic state and have it run through me than to be left 10% short. You start figuring that out, I think that you'll see for the minimal of pennies that you would spend, it would be well worth the time. I've always said to individuals, when you go to the store and you go, the most important thing you're going to buy when you go to buy things that supply your body and take care of yourself. And people will say, protein, Bert, because we know you're big on protein. I go, right on. But myself, I'm going to buy some vitamins and minerals to make sure that the food I have is backed up with an insurance policy. So I look at supplements as the essence of food. I don't look at them as a pill or a drug or some type of a temporary fix. I look at those as the essence of my food. I'd rather have a little more of what I needed than to run out and have a little less. After you've got your minerals and vitamins down, then it's protein. Outside of water, your body's made out of more protein than anything else. Your hair is protein, skin is protein, your organs are protein, your blood is protein, your bones have protein. By the way, is that an incomplete protein? Is that beans, peas, rice, corn, and potatoes? No. This is complete protein, and I prefer to use a complete protein to fix it. When you use an incomplete protein, you're not getting all the required amino acids in any one particular product, but you're getting all, again, all the calories. So you may not get all the repair you wanted, but you will get all the energy you needed and maybe some more in the back seat, the front seat, wherever that energy is going to go. So you want to think about protein is that protein can also give you energy because energy is the number one requirement with the body. If you had a little extra protein, it can supply that energy, plus it can supply the repair. But if you have more carbohydrates or fats than you need, and not enough energy, you can't keep your muscle up, so your metabolism then starts to slow. So complete protein, if you want a complete body. And we found that with people who have sicknesses, it makes a huge difference in the proteins they need. Like with Jean has found that when she eats fish, it's totally easier on her body, having had the limits with her liver that she's had. If you look at animals, you'll see that the bears who eat fish become much larger than the bears who are landlocked. Take any two animals and raise one on a, on a higher protein diet, and you'll see the growth change. So would you rather have a little too much or a little too little? I'd rather have a little too much. I'd rather have a little bit more of the repair food that could be used for energy than a little too much of the energy food that may not be used quite well for repair. Next would be fats. Protein, then fats. What's the deal? What about carbs? Are you made out of carbs? No. But protein is going to keep me repaired to get from here to there if I need to get somewhere. And it's going to supply the energy. So if I'm going to pick one food, I'm going to pick protein. Then I'm going to pick fat, because fat is the next highest in calories. It is the highest in denseness in calories or energy food. It helps with the fat-soluble vitamins. It uh, helps to hold the blood sugar level longer than carbohydrates. And you have two types. You have your saturated or animal type fats, and your unsaturated fats, which come from like safflower oil, olive oil, sesame oil, etc. 
And by the way, if you don't have enough fat in your body, growth is greatly slow. It is the best energy producer. So it helps with healthy blood. What? Yes. It helps with healthy blood, healthy arteries, healthy nerves, healthy skin. And it helps to transfer and break down cholesterol. Did you know that if you don't get enough cholesterol, your body's going to overproduce it? We literally lowered people's cholesterol by having them eat 18 eggs a day and raw meat. And we proved it. There's enough lecithin in the center of an egg to emulsify the cholesterol in it. When that egg was going to be brought forth to create a light, God didn't make it imperfect. <coughs> so cholesterol can be helped. If you have the right unsaturated fatty acids, they break down saturated fats. So if you want to keep your arteries clean, and here's an example, a little fish oil. Look at, you'll never find an Eskimo dying from the wrong kinds of fats because he eats so many fish oils So he does well. And look at the size of those bears. They're not unhealthy for all the fat they eat because it's the right fat. It's a good fat. Now, excessive fats can put on weight, so you do need to moderate in what you do. But in all of my dietary systems, I use a minimum a minimum of, of two to 400 calories a day in unsaturated fats. They also help with cholesterol. If you don't get enough fat in your body, your body will overproduce cholesterol. But cholesterol is very important for the nerves, for the brain. It's an insulator. It's needed in the body. It's not all bad. Just, there's good in almost everything that we can put into our body. Again, is it your exception or is it your rule? And last, carbs. When we get down to this point, we get to the carbs. And this is the chief source of energy for most people. But what kind are you using? There's three major types of carbs. And I'm going to break them down this way. There's the sugars, the honeys, and the fruits. There are the starches, which are the grains. They're the ones that really give you the dense amount of carbohydrates. And then there's the cellulose type of carbs, vegetables. I'll guarantee you'll never find a fat vegetable. But you watch anything that eats grains or sugars. Now, they'll get real large, real quick, and they store quite fast and quite long. But when you eat vegetables, they'll burn off more calories than they take in, yet they'll give you a carbohydrate lift, leave minerals in your body, and yet help you to burn fat off. So I always tell people, you're never going to find a fat fish and a fat vegetable. And when you're taught survival in the wilderness, one of the first things you're taught is you can die from trout and rabbit starvation. There's not enough fat in the diet, so you have to look for grubs, moths, and all the other good little creatures that are kind of creepy and crawly, but have what you need. It's not real advisable to try and find the source of fat that's either a porcupine, okay, it's kind of hard to get to that with your hands, or with a baby bear, that's not another advisable source, okay? And buffalo hump fat is a little hard to come from now that the mountain men used to see. But those were delicacies on wild animals. They don't have the fat. That's why a wild animal eating that type of red meat has less calories in a deer or an elk per ounce than in salmon. So you don't have the bad fats that you do with commercialized meats. So if you follow these steps that I've laid out for you tonight, and you'll take a look, that you've removed your problematic causes and you've limited them, and you've, you've got to start looking into other ones. You've gotten those out. You've done some cleaning. You've cleaned up the residue, gotten your body breathable, relaxable, receivable. You've gotten your pH balance and your assimilation and absorption part of your body ready to receive. You then have it well hydrated by this point. You get the right minerals in. You can absorb them. The minerals are like building blocks, and the vitamins are more like mortar. Imagine a, a block wall. Imagine the mortar in your body is vitamins, and the minerals are the blocks. Okay. Example, the bones. Okay. And what holds them together is the vitamins. Okay. The minerals, the right vitamins. Again, I believe in expensive urine. And then we get into proteins. That's what we're made of mostly. Let's prioritize how the body's made right here. And let's look at putting light and, and common sense back into this. Then we get to the proteins. I suggest fish, eggs, 
whole amino acid supplements such as whey protein that is ionically correct. In other words, 100% ionic without any of the milk fats and sugars in it. Then go to the right fats, again getting some of the right types, the fish oils, the unsaturated fats. Then going on to the carbohydrates, and if at this point you need to change anything, and I want to just cite a couple of things here. Gene, is this exactly what I've had you do to help your hepatitis exactly. Jane, is this what I've done to help you lose the weight and the person that you worked that had the problems with skin? Mari, basically, this is what I've said, this is the base of my program. Not my program, but let's just say a, um, how do you, an intelligently engineered program. But scientifically, it has worked. From the science side, it's worked too. Because results are proof. And I've got 30 years of results as proof, and, and this is for anyone who will receive it. It's just following what the body dictates. So now synergy can happen. One and one equals three or four or five. Instead of one plus one back here the wrong way, can, e can equal three or four or five bad. So it's going to do something to you or something for you. And remember this, and I'll just kind of finish up with this. Quality input is going to have quality output. Okay? So your performance level is going to go up. And I want to give you a couple of more quotes to just think about to kind of leave with you. The doctor of the future will give no medications, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in cause and prevention of disease. Thomas Alva Edison. And this is another one that I kind of like here that's really good. The art of healing comes from nature and not from the physician. Therefore, the physician must start from nature with an open mind. Paracelsus. And one other one. No illness which can be treated by the diet should be treated by any other means. Moses Maimonides, or Momonides, 1135. So, if anybody has any questions, any questions? Yes? Uh, for, on the carbohydrates, would vegetable carbohydrates be enough? Well, you'd for want to ask some of my clients, are they enough? Do you, do you get, how many, we, we, yes, they can be enough, sure. But it's going to be, how much can you eat? If you'll ask Bill there, he just got his rear end chewed, uh, his protein knot on over there by coming in here and eating a salad that he thought was average. You know, most people think this is a salad. This is a salad. <laughs> when I talk a vegetable portion at a meal, I'm talking two and a half cups cut up to the size of your finger. You do need the other carbohydrates. But let's look at your day and how the energy flow runs. Let's look at the expenditures that you have in your life today compared to what we had years ago. And let us devise each program as that goes. That's why I take every individual, depending where they are with their amount of lean body mass per activity level, per height, per size, and we go from there. Everything must be individualized. Remember I said, Everybody needs the same thing, but everybody needs different amounts. Another question? Did that help to answer your question? Yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking, so could you actually go on mostly vegetables and pretty much eliminate grains from your diet completely, or would you just... Well, here's the thing. I would eliminate nothing. Now, let me share this with you. I believe in eliminating nothing except everything I eat. Okay at one point or another. But when you talk about eliminating grains, no, I don't believe in eliminating grains. I believe in limiting the amounts of different things that I eat. But I believe that I believe in eating grain and everything that I do with individuals, there are grains, there are vegetables, there are fruits, and there are complete proteins. And after that, there is water, and then there are minerals, vitamins, proteins, fats, carbohydrates, but everything, again, has got to be put together. Tonight is just to give you an idea how things might work. Is there anyone here 
that has trouble seeing how this order would work? Is it pretty self-evident to you? How, how did you perceive that order? You've not been here before. What do you think about the you way know, that's... It's not that I haven't heard before, and it makes sense. And I vacillated back and forth between, you know, going raw, going vegetarian, and I'm going to owe blood type, and I just, it doesn't work for me. Let I, me I share know, something with you about but blood the types. acid pH balance alkaline, I've kind of, that, that was something that is a little challenging. Have you ever seen it put in this order before? Yeah, that makes a sense. That you've, have you seen that order like that before, though? Not as much focus on the minerals, but yes. Right. That order okay. Is... Here's the problem. Vegetarian doesn't work. This doesn't. No. It's a balance. It's yeah. what this body dictates. See, we've got to get away from the individual, the ego, and the emotion, mm -hmm. and we've got to go to what the system dictates. When I get the results with individuals that I work with, when I won my titles, I stressed my body in only 20 minutes. But the stress I gave it was equal to 10 hours of most people's workout. Okay? But I worked more on the recovery. I'm talking about that don't eliminate anything, but learn how much and when to use it. Mm -hmm. there, are op there are windows of opportunity that will give you greater degrees or lesser degrees of success. So it's how you paint that picture. Any other questions? One of the other things I'd like to leave you with is that when you think about doing something like this, it's not going to happen overnight if you're just going to start trying to do it tomorrow. I've spent a lot of years doing it. I don't mean to make it sound too easy. But on the other hand, it is pretty much self-evident. The problem is, is that most people that come to me, whether they're obese or not, are undernourished, overfed, in the wrong ways. Most people do not eat enough of the right foods and eat too much rum. Again, it's what is their exception and what is their rule? This is what it comes It's just that simple. You know, Einstein said, if you can't say it simply, you don't know enough about the subject. And I found that to be true. I really loved it when Bill came to me. He's been a tennis coach for many years with the University of Arizona. And he said to me, he said, you know, Bernie, so I can relate to you. He said, let me tell you how I signed my tennis players up. They'd come to me and they'd say, coach, I want to play tennis for you. He'd say, okay, let's go outside beside the building. I can already hear it coming when he said that to me. He said, I take the ball outside beside the building in a racket and I say, hit me three or four forehands, okay? Now hit me three or four backhands, okay? You want to play tennis for us? Come on. They go, coach, don't you want to see me play? And Bill would say, I've already seen you play. He knows what he was looking for. When people come to me, some things, I do tend to make things sound a little easy. I don't mean to do that, but it is that easy when you start to see simple enough. Today, we have made everything too difficult. Nothing is that difficult. We have had the common sense educated out of us. What we need to do is simplify. Simplify. Any other questions? For, for yes, Bill. On, on, uh, on the Saturday morning when you go get your popcorn. Or my, my, my bacon my, mixer. Yeah, or whatever. Is, is that a... Uh, craving or is it a is it a it's a desire it's not a craving it's a desire my clients that follow what I tell them they'll tell you here no cravings no hunger food becomes nothing more than a necessity or fuel when you are balanced and here's the other thing when you start to eat the right things your body then has a frame of reference of what to ask for but if it's always had junk to ask for and it has simpler junk to digest than others it's going to take the easy way out it's going to take it. But what you've got to realize is, is that, no, I have a desire. I want that, that taste. You know, hey, I want my self-will to run a little riot here for a few minutes. I don't want to let the horse out of the barn and let him take off, but I'm going to allow myself a little freedom here, a little rest, a rest for the spirit, rest for the mind, a little jolt for the body. You know, again, everything in moderation, especially moderation. Okay? And like I said, I can resist everything but temptation. Haven't you ever been tempted? Yes, Richard. Bert, explain to them how our uh, support groups used to work. Where we used our to support go. groups, when I used to teach these things at a support group, I, I would get a building, get a restaurant to work with me. We would all go there, and we, I would lecture for the first hour. And then at that point, I would have them bring in desserts, eight, ten desserts for maybe 20 people. 
and we'd cut them all up, four or five people, we'd all take a little piece, we'd all have something to drink a little bit, and we'd leave. Now, we didn't have enough to put on any weight or to cause us any problems, but it was the idea that we could have it, taste it, and we didn't have to indulge in it. You know, there's a difference in grazing and gorging. You know, if, when I eat a creme brulee, I, I'm a creme brulee fanatic, okay? And I'm also a...